and then I'm going to start, and if anybody comes in there, they've potentially uh, missed the boat. Thanks for your patience, guys. Here we go. So this is where we were. This is what I used Tactical Pad for. And if I can show you a couple of examples, static presentations in regards to a, a, a picture that's been made on Tactical Pad and then accompanying text that's also been made on Tactical Pad. So there's the intro to a section, some sort of game or activity, some sort of skill, that kind of idea, which I'm sure you under, understand as there's many coaches in the, in the chat. So I use it for that and we'll go over that today. I use it for animated session plans, uh, such as this. Okay, something that um, that moves uh, as your uh, as you're planning your sessions, and we'll go over today how you can create something something similar or something a bit different, obviously as well. But we'll look at how you can create animated session plans uh, using Tactical Pad. I'm going to let this run in case anybody's computer's lagging or they're just getting it now. I'm going to let it run and then we'll move on. Everybody keen to know who wins this drill between Xavi and Iniesta gets schools and keen in the, the absence of football at the moment. You'll all be in the edge of your seats. So we use it for that, animated session plans. Yeah. yeah. We use it for tactical presentations. Слушаю тут это. Video conference. Tactical presentations such as this. So um, perhaps if you're presenting to your team or you're doing a bit of opposition analysis, we'll, we'll touch on this uh, a little bit. Uh, and finally, I use Tactical Pad for um, sharing some ideas and knowledge and obviously receiving a lot of ideas and knowledge in, in particular football or, or soccer coaching, which is my, um, what, what I do in my role. Um, but I have seen other sports and, and teachers, etc. using it as well. But I use it to share a lot of my ideas and gather a lot of ideas from other people, which we'll touch on today, how you can be part of a kind of coaches community and network through Tactical Pad as well. Um, the, the flyer that you should be seeing now is uh, a webinar that I'm hosting tomorrow, where today I'm obviously just showing you how to use Tactical Pad. Tomorrow I'm actually using Tactical Pad to share some of my coaching ideas and a bit of my coaching philosophy. So today you're getting to see me a little bit out of my comfort zone in regards to software and technology and IT. Um, but I've got no issue with putting myself out of my comfort zone. Hopefully today goes okay. I'll, I'll welcome your feedback at the end. Hopefully tomorrow uh, many of you will join me uh, when I'm a wee bit more in my comfort zone and a wee bit more keen to unmute everyone and talk coaching and open up a bit of discussion and show, it, show a few of my ideas. Obviously something I'm really passionate about because I'm putting myself out there tomorrow, uh, Inventive Player curriculum that I've pulled together. Um, but today, just to rewind back, this is what today is going to be about. And this is what I use Tactical Pad for. There are a lot of functions that aren't going to be discussed today that you can pick up with me, as I say, when I share my contact details uh, at the end. Uh, a couple of nods if everyone's still with me. Does it sound good? Okay. So let's open Tactical Pad and let's just go through those um, those four points. So that one. A nod and a thumbs up if you can now see Tactical Pad software. You may be doing it as you go along. Um, we are recording to, to share this if you want to pick up ideas. And as again, you can reach out to me in future. So the first thing I said that I use Tactical Pad for is static session plans. So I want to make a, a session plan from a coaching session that will be a picture accompanied by some, uh, some text. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just quickly go over a couple of the features, uh, a couple of the buttons here. So new project. Um, obviously, you've got Tactical Pad. You're gonna you're gonna do something with it. Open project. You're gonna open another Tactical Pad project. So something that's been created on Tactical Pad software, and that's what you're going to open. Obviously, save, save as, open these Tactical Pad project settings. You'll see a few other little things you can do in there. 
Um, you can go through all this in your own time. I'm going to share the, the main stuff with you. One of the key things would be obviously the field tab. How do you want your field to look? Has it got some channels? Uh, has it got some boxes? You, you may see something within this field uh, box that you want to use. Um, you can edit if you think it looks best like that, if you think it looks best like that, if you're using half a pitch, you can edit half a pitch, etc. etc. I don't need to um, over exaggerate the point. You can go in and you can change fields. There's also fields in there uh, in regards to different sports, which I said tactical pad can be used for uh, as well. Um, you can also, if you have a picture just on your desktop, just on your laptop, that you want to make the background, you can also upload a, a picture. So I've seen people in the past, they maybe want to get a point across to players and they upload a picture of a, of a game, if that kind of makes sense. And then they use all the tactical pads I'm going to, uh, I'm going to show you to, to do lines and highlight areas and, and actually give a wee bit of feedback to players. So you essentially can make this pitch look like however you want to make it look like when you're about to do what I'm about to show you now in regards to creating session plans. Um, you'll, you'll appreciate I can't pitch this at what everybody needs. Some people are going to be nodding along thinking, yeah, I know that, that's not what I'm here for. Some people are going to be brand new to it, et cetera, et cetera. So again, I hope today opens up a line of communication um, if you do have any, any questions. Uh, one view that you may prefer when you're planning sessions or feeding back to players would be the 3D view. Um, which we can we can jump in and out of uh, throughout today, uh, and essentially it's it will look the same, but it'll be 3D with with 3D players. So we can jump in and out and see how our session plans looking in, in the 3D mode. But just keep that in mind that you, it's there, it's there if you want to use it. We're just going to stick with 2D. Um, so I'm going to make some static um, drills, exercises, activities, wh whatever they are. Please don't be concerned if you can't keep up because I'm just going to make them the way I use tactical pad. I'm going to make one, I'm going to make another, I'm going to make some mistakes, I'm going to show how you fix the mistakes. I'm just going to crack on. So I want to make a, a static session plan. Um, so the field that I'm going to select for, I'm going to select a kind of blank field there. And I'm actually going to make a PDF session plan with four or five different types of Rondo activities that I quite like. So the next time I'm looking for a rondo activity, it will be here. Um, so I want a square. So I'm going to go into tools. This is where you get your items, if you need footballs, cones, etc. This is where you get your arrows and your lines. What I'm looking for um, is a box to do a rondo in. So let's say I select a box. I don't want it highlighted, but let's say I accidentally get a highlighted box. Then there's a rubber feature here as well. Okay. Let's say I put in a couple of other things that I wasn't quite wanting. There's a few things that I, I didn't mean to do. Um, you can click on the rubber and delete them individually. Or if you know you just want to start from scratch and everything you've put on to this point in regards to drawing over the top of your tactical plan session, this one here is just delete all. Are you sure you want to do that? Because it's a big step. I'm going to click yes. And I'm going to draw again. Okay, hopefully we're keeping up or again, watch it back. So what I actually wanted was a box. Sorry. Uh, that wasn't highlighted. So I'll unclick the highlighted. Do I want dash lines or do I want full lines? Completely up. Sorry, let me deal with people taking their, their microphones off. Um, what color do I want the box? I'm just going to go with white and I'm just going to create there you go, that's my, that's my area, okay? Um, I always think it's a good idea as well, if you, if you want to create an area showing cones and you want to make sure it's a perfect square, it's always a good, it might be a good idea, use your cones. Red cone, red cone there. And then use that rubber function to delete the line. And it just means your cones aren't all over the place and it's maybe a more concise, kind of nice session plan. So that's just sharing another idea. And, and with the nature of me creating a lot here, hopefully there'll be a few of these kind of ideas. Right, I want some players. So up here on the left-hand side, there's a picture of me uh, on the left and right-hand side. Now you could have made that picture Team A, Team B, Man United, Chelsea, wh whatever it is, because essentially when you click on that, that'll give you some players to work with. So I'm doing a rondo that's going to have, um, I don't know, six players on the outside. One, two three, 
and you just drag them on. I'm hoping that's clear as I'm doing it. Four, five, six. Okay, I'm just going to do a 6v1 rondo. Now I'm looking at those players and I'm thinking I don't need them to be numbered. Um, that may cause some sort of confusion when I look at this session plan and, and think, was there a reason behind the numbers? And there's not. So on the bottom right hand side here, um, as a question came in there, guys, that the software is free until the 31st of May. Um, so if you have it or you want to get it, play around with it. Um, if I go into settings here, again, I can put my team badge up here or a picture of the coach, whatever it is. Um, and you can edit the appearance. So I'm just going to go there. That's how I'd like the team to appear. There's a few different styles, etc. We'll touch on that later. But essentially, I want to take out those numbers there. Okay, I want a player in the middle uh, of the rondo. So you could go to the other team and use one of their players. You may stick with the same category of players you have and put a bib on them. So if you want to put a bib on a player, uh, just double click. And you, there's a few other fancy things you can do. We may touch on later on. Uh, but essentially, that white box there is the only one I really use. And I'll stick a bib on the player there. Yeah. I'll just let the uh, software catch up. So guys, just, just be mindful of where your, your, your chat box is so you can hopefully see the full, uh, the full picture. Uh, now, I'm just going to open the chat. Somebody can't hear me. If that is a consistent problem that you can't hear me, um, can you please type in the chat that you can't hear me also? Thanks, thanks for the feedback, if you can hear me as well, of course. I think it's working for the majority of people, so I, I apologise um, if it's working for the majority. It, it may be likely that it's something on your side as opposed to on my side. So I've got a rondo here, uh, and I've thrown that together, hopefully quite simply. I'm then going to go back into my tools here, and I'm going to accompany some notes with it, because as I mentioned, what we're going through now is a picture with a couple of notes. Oh, sorry, that I've made a mistake that I made often when I first started using text, but text would be in regards to your putting text actually on. Make it bigger if you want, take away the background if you want. Text means you're putting text on your pitch. Notes mean you're giving a couple of accompanying notes. So I'll accompany notes 6v1, Rondo, players must follow the ball after they make a pass. There's a couple of notes. Now, the reason I'm putting in that players must follow the ball is I may want to demonstrate that also. So I'll click an arrow. Click an arrow, uh, follow pass, I'll just make blue. I'll make it a solid line. Uh, and I'm saying, you know, kind of rondo idea here. I'm maybe then making a smaller line, dashed line in black to demonstrate that when you pass the ball, you then follow the ball there. Okay, so that's our first static uh, session plan. Now, as I say, I, I want to make a I want to make a resource here um, of a couple of rondo drills that I may come back to and use again. Guys, I'm just going to let a few people in who have been waiting patiently in the 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 meeting room. So I'm going to make a, a PDF um, or whatever document you would use that has um, a selection of rondos. Now, it might not be a selection of rondos. It might obviously be you're creating something that's, you know, warm up, first drill, progression, game, whatever it is you're, you're looking to do, week one, week two, week three, whatever. So I want to add something to, to follow on to this. So a real key one for today is going to be that where it says boards. It's where it says boards here. So I've got my static board here because we're working on static boards. We'll do animated boards a little bit later on. And I've got a couple of options. I can copy the board that I'm on just now because what I'm going to do, I'm maybe using the same area, the same number of players, etc., etc. Or I can just add a new static board. You can also change the name of the board, and this will appear on 
your PDF a little bit later, as I'll show you. So I'm saying that this is rondo number one, and I'm adding another board because I now want to create rondo number two. So let's create another rondo. The field I'm going to use this time is going to be here. Guys, what allows me to do as the person leading this webinar is I can save the chats and any questions in there, I can maybe look at the end, but I just don't want to be taking up uh, too much uh, of everybody's time today. So this is going to be for my next um, rondo. I'm going to have 4v2 in here. So hopefully just by creating a couple of static sessions, you can kind of get the idea and see a few different things. I'm going to have a player up here. I'm going to use two players from the other team. Again, I don't want these players to be numbered, so I'm going to go into team setting and I'm going to change their appearance to this, but it could be the appearance, anything that you want. And I'm going to use some arrows to kind of demonstrate roughly what's going on. Pass, pass, lay off, pass, and then I'll use a different color and a dotted line to say that when the ball goes up there, uh, three players follow on one stage to transition back. I would add my notes. 5v2 transition rondo. What you can also do in your notes as well. How many players are you using? Seven. What space are you using? Etc, etc, etc. Okay. So just to show that perhaps one more time. Menu, boards, I want to create another board. And what I'm getting across the bottom here uh, is essentially a session plan. So let's say this time I want to use, what will we use? I just want to use a couple of different fields if we can. There's a different field there. So then, let, me, let me do one that maybe um, uses a couple of more different teams and things like that. So perhaps what I want to do is 6v3 Rondo. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But they're kind of locked inside their zones. Sorry, I'm going to keep admitting uh, people, guys, just more the merrier, I guess. So they're kind of locked within their zones, um, and I want three defenders trying to win the ball that can go in any zones. Okay, but what I'm going to show here is uh, three teams of three. So, Bib, that's a pink player. That's a pink player. And that's a pink player. This player's perhaps in the yellow team. This player's perhaps in the yellow team. And this player's perhaps in the yellow team. Everybody's stuck in a zone apart from the three defenders. If the blue defender wins the ball off a of purple, then the blues take up their areas and the purples become the defenders. So just to give you an idea of how we can bib up uh, three different teams. Again, just to reiterate what we can do in here. Um, team in possession. Stuck in boxes, defenders try and win the ball. Uh, the player that loses it would be joined by his or her teammates. What we obviously need as well for these are, are footballs, which are in here, in your items. So drag a football across. Feel free to double click on any of your items and, and make it smaller, make it bigger, duplicate it if we needed more footballs. If you put something on you don't need, so I've just put an extra football on there that I certainly don't need in this drill. Um, I can just slide it off, just drag it off the, the bottom of the corner. Guys, I appreciate that, that Fernando from Tactical Bad is answering some questions on the chat function as well, which is great. It saves me having to, to check it. Um, so there we go. I've got Static boards, I'm going to move on from static now to animated, which uh, which perhaps takes a little bit more time, but my boards are essentially my components. I've got Rondo 1, 
I've got Rondo two. I've got Rondo three. Now there's loads of different ways to use tactical pad. If I can just share the way the way I use it, I plan my sessions on a static board. I then deliver them on the pitch. If they work well, I come back and I maybe update the notes section of what, what worked well. But what worked really well, I then take the static sessions and I animate them. So when I look into my animated folder of, of drills and session plans, I can kind of see them as opposed to have to read them through. So let's say I follow that process where I now want to turn these into animated session plans. It would simply be boards here. If I go into tools, so I want to do something to this session and I hit animation, so this is a real key um, part of today. If I hit animation, do you want to change this static board to an animated board? And I would click yes and I would animate it. That's not how I'm going to do it today. But I'm just saying if you create a load of static um, material, you can use that material as a baseline to then animate it. Okay, and all it would do on your boards is it would go from this line up to this line here. And I apologize if I'm losing anyone, but I will repeat myself uh, throughout. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to create an animated session plan um, from scratch. Uh, but I, I could animate these, these boards here. Um, now, let's have a little look what I'm actually going to do with this uh, static session plan I've made, though. Uh, I may want to save it as a tactical pad project because I've not quite finished it. Um, you probably want to save it anyway, so always go back to it. And I may want to think, yeah, I want to print this and take it onto the pitch, or I want to share it another way. So if I hit share, if I want to share it as an image, then obviously you hit image. And it would just, just ask, where do you want to, to share it uh, on your computer? I'll share it in this webinar, um, and, and I would share it as, you know, whatever, whatever you would like to call it. And that's sharing the image of the board that you have open just now. What I use a lot more often, and I think you'll benefit more from this, is I'll hit share, and I'll share it as a document. Let's say I'm going to share it as a JPEG, so as a picture. And I want to share just this one board that I've got open, just the board that I've got open, the picture and the text underneath. Then that's what I would do. I'm going to show you a couple of different things as well, so, so please bear with me. And the board that I'm on at the moment, Rondo 1, I'm saving that there. And we'll go and have a wee look at how that looks. So I've shared that as a document. I'm now opening it. Please bear with me. I understand this is taking a little bit of time, but there's there's nothing wrong. It's um, it'll be with you in a second. Okay, so the, that, that looks good. And um, I know you can't see it because I'm just sharing my tactical pad with you. You're not seeing my desktop. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to share this on the chat. So Zoom allows you to share it um, as a file on the chat. So you, you'll, get, um, you'll get that today. I'll perhaps share it at the end. Um, what you can do as well. Oh, sorry, guys. What you could do as well. I've obviously drawn something there that I didn't mean to. Bear with me. So what you could do also is share document. Oh, sorry, I've drawn that over the, the top of, uh, of my Zoom, but don't worry, I'll get rid of that in a second. You could hit share document, PDF, and then you're just picking your layout. So what I'm going to share with you now, and I'll put it on the chat, um, static session plan. It's going to ask you, what do you actually want to include in this session plan? So sometimes I, I create a, a board that's got loads of passing drills, and I just want to print a couple of them out uh, for the session that I'm doing. So what I'm going to say is that I want my session plan to include Rondo 1, to include Rondo 2, to include Rondo 3, 
still just going to ask me where do I want to save it. So this is what you won't see because um, I'm only sharing my tactical pad here. Um, so I'm just going to share, sorry, I'm just going to save it. And then I'm going to share it on the group chat. And then we're going to move on to animated session plans. Okay, everyone, I'm going to come out of Tactical Pad for the moment. And we'll be back in as a group. Uh, and that's me shared a uh, static session plan. Uh, while I'm back on this screen, uh, within the chat, I'll try and send that PDF to you now. Uh, and if that doesn't work, I can email it out um, as part of this as well. And then we're going to go on and I'll do animated session plans and I'll do the same thing. I'll put it in the chat or if it doesn't work, I'll email it out to you as well. Just, just to, to show you kind of what we've been working on. So in the chat now, um, there should be a PDF called Rondos there for download uh, and, and to save. I'm just trying that now as well, guys. I'm just having a look, obviously, first time doing this. You, you can let me know in the chat if that uh, PDF came through, if it looks like what I was trying to make. You can let me know. Okay, thanks. So you, you got a PDF there. Um, there is a great question there. Is there a way to include the four corners in the printout? Um, I, I believe so. Um, so what that refers to as well, just share my screen again, guys, because we're going to go on to animated session plans. So I'll touch on that. I'll touch on that throughout. Okay. We're on to animated session plans. Can I ask for another thumbs up or nod if everyone's still with me and can now see a session plan? So we should be at a moment here that there's nothing new from what I've just shown in creating a static session plan. I have a static session plan in front of me in regards to I put some players on, I put some bibs on, I put some cones out, I put some footballs on, and I've got a static session plan in front of me. So if I go onto my boards now, I created these up here because I plan on animating them, but I could have created them here and then hit that animated button and moved it up, which would have been absolutely fine. Still a few people coming in, which is, is great, but apologies, it's distracting me just a little. I appreciate some people are maybe getting kicked out and having to come back in. So what I've done is I've created four boards statically, or I've just not animated them yet. I've created an activity. I've created a progression, a game, and a game. Now, within this static session plan, as a coach, I don't want to be moving my goals or moving my area. So these are four static boards. There's no animation on them yet, but they're all the same. So I just created one um, activity as I'm starting, and then I hit that duplicate the tool. Again, these are things you work out the more you use tactical pad. What I've done previously as well, because I've already shown you, is I've written a couple of notes. So what I want to animate here is, so I've got my picture and I've got my text. I think it worked quite well on the pitch. So I now want to animate it for future reference. So what does it say here? Each player has a ball and we will start the practice dribbling through the gates, encouraging players to be creative, blah, blah, blah. Um, and there can be some fun challenges. So you can't go through the same gate twice, have a bit of a race or whatever. So I want to animate to show these players with a ball at their feet uh, dribbling through these gates. So I'm clicking this button here, animation. Uh, and then the, your real key, your, your probably the most important, you, important button you'll see in this component. I'll just hover over it for a minute. This is how we create like the next frame of the animation. So anything I move on my pitch right now, that will work in that frame. Now, if you move them again and you've not hit this button, you, you delete the movement you did earlier. So I will make a few mistakes throughout, but essentially, let me just check, guys, because someone's trying to get in touch. Okay. 
few people not getting the PDF, again, it's more likely down to something maybe on your side because it seems to be working with the majority. Email me at the end and I can share you some stuff with you. Uh, today is not really about sharing coaching resources. It's about how, how do you work tactical pad. However, tomorrow, loads of coaching resources. So I hope a lot of you will join me for that. So if I hit this button here, I've got a new frame. So what do I want to happen in this frame? I'll move that ball and it will show you the trail. And I'll move that player. So I'm simulating players dribbling with the ball. Obviously, do a wee bit of passing or whatever later. Dribble, move. You'll notice when you move the ball, it gives you a quick little option. Do you want this ball moving on the ground or do you want it moving in there? And so you can select. If you want it in there, then select it in there. Uh, dribble, move the player. Dribble, move the player. Guys, I'm just thinking out loud here, but there's absolutely no reason that when I finish my presentation, I can't unmute anyone. And any, I, I can't just unmute. I'll unmute everyone and we can have a conversation. Um, so please take notes and have questions ready at the end. Um, Move the ball, move the player, move the ball, move the player, etc., etc. Now, I want these players, um, I want the animation to show these players going through the gates. So, if I was to move this player through that gate now, I didn't hit the button to move to the next frame. So, the movement there is the only movement that player's done. So I don't want them going through the gate yet. I want them dribbling to the gate. And then I want to hit that magic button. Next frame. So what happens now on this frame? On this frame, through the gate. Through the gate. This player's perhaps still running with the ball, trying to find the gate. This player's perhaps going through the gate. Through the gate. Okay, so what do I want to happen in the next frame? And you can always, of course, check your work to this point. So hit play. How does my animation look? Is everybody running with the ball? Does it look decent? Did I make any mistakes? Which is obviously absolutely fine. And you would just hit this delete. Any frame that you want to delete, there's um, just a button there. Looks a bit like a, a kind of trash can there. You delete. Will that be the last one you've done or going back and deleting a, a previous one? Okay, quite happy. So once again, I'll do the next frame. I'll do the next frame. Dribble, dribble, dribble. And I won't label the point. This will be the last frame on this particular thing for how we get players running and moving with the ball. And obviously, if it was a passing exercise, I would maybe just move the ball and keep leave the player. Move the ball there and potentially move the player somewhere else. There's a way to pass and move. And it's it's just practicing and, and playing with it in your own in your own time. Now I've only got a couple of uh do you know what I will do one more? Because I'll show you one more thing. Um dribbling, there's obviously a range of movements that these players could be doing. They might not necessarily be running on straight lines, which is right now. So this is a, a great tool um, if you can take this on board or practice it. I'm going to say that they're dribbling there. I'm going to say that they're dribbling there. Whatever. Now, and I'm sorry if I lose anyone. Please ask questions at the end. Please get in touch. But you can actually add a dribbling movement a frame ahead so I can I can show the dribbling movement I want in the next frame and I, I think the thinking behind that is you can get the dribble and then in the next frame you can move the defenders to react uh, the way they would so I would click on this edit button here which obviously is is live throughout me doing this I, I can be adding more goals I can be adding more footballs I can be moving cones I can be editing things which I'm going to throw throughout we spoke earlier about these lines to draw arrows. You can use these lines, particularly the one that's a kind of squiggly line, for the direction of a, of a football or of a player. So if I just drew that squiggly line over here, it's on my animation as a squiggly line, which I might need 
or it's on my animation if I turned it into an arrow or if I turned it into, you know, one of these. And I'm just showing that. But you can use these lines to move the footballs and the players as well. So let's, let me give you an easier way once you get comfortable with tactical pad to do a dribbling exercise like I do here. I'm going to click on the squiggly line. I'm going to take this football. He's going to go through that gate, he or she, through that gate, through that gate, through that gate, through that gate. Okay? I'm then going to click the player. Be careful not to click the ball again because you would move it differently. I'm going to get the player to go with the ball. So perhaps a quicker way when you're doing a dribbling exercise is to utilize these squiggly lines. So now, when I hit play, hopefully, be quite embarrassing if this didn't work, that player's just following that path. Sorry if the technology is slow, sorry if it's jumping. I, I can tell through experience from what I see on my screen, there's a player with a ball quite smoothly dribbling in, in around cones. I think this is a, a good moment, a good point, for me to try and see if I can get a few nods and thumbs up again, please. Does that look all right? Animated. Let me scroll through. Guys, nods, thumbs up, look okay? All right. So just to make sure you're still with me, because I'm obviously minimizing the, the chat while I do this. So what I'll do now is I'll just show that with, with a, a couple of other players, that player going there. I actually just got players running with a ball. I would perhaps do it for all of them, if, if that's what I'm trying to show. So that I, I picked three players there, uh, and I used the tool that I've already discussed just to get them dribbling around. Uh, this is going at a certain speed, uh, you'll see in this box here, you can obviously increase the speed of the animation. Do you want it kind of real time, the way you've done it? Do you want it two times faster? Do you want it four times faster? I'm very mindful that over the internet connection, you're probably seeing this quite glitchy and quite slow. Um, however, I, I, I'll, I'll share it with you and it'll look a little bit better. It won't be ideal because I'm, I'm trying to multitask, which isn't my strength, but it'll be a little bit better and I'll share the video with you. Uh, so yeah, using this method is great for, as I think someone's mentioned in the chat there, get them to dribble one way and then quickly squiggle them away the other way and all that kind of thing. Okay, so that board's animated. My progression to this, I'll click on it, I'll read the notes. notes and um, utilizing the bibs uh, teams will now take turns to defend the gate um, so we're still doing a competition if the players dribble through a gate that doesn't have a defender in it that's one point if the players dribble through a gate that has a defender in it that's five points defenders can only move between the two cones that create the gate they're defending okay so this is my next board What I'm doing here is I am taking the, just a second, sorry. I'm getting the green players to go and stand in a gate without a football. Get the green players to stand in the gate without a football, and then I would use the same tool for, for the players to be uh, dribbling around and trying to go past these players here. I'm just animate this just a couple of times just so I can share it with you.
I'm using the, the rubber idea here to delete a line that I put on by accident as well, just going back to that there. So I've got the green players in the gates. And now I'm just going to, for the purpose of just getting a, um, a drill that I can then show you how we would share this on social media, amongst coaches, uh, via this Zoom webinar. For the purpose of that, just please bear with me while I put in a couple more animations. Dribbling around. Um, one point, if they go through an empty gate, uh, five points if they decide to go and try and take on a player who's in, uh, who's defending a gate. Good to challenge your good players and allow the, the players who just need to work on change of direction and close control to do that as well. But we're not here to talk overly about coaching today. It's just about tactics. Okay, so there we go. Um, I'm moving on to my next board there, a potential progression to that one. As it says in the notes, uh, as you can obviously have, if you try and go through a gate with a defender in it and they win the ball, you'll now win the gate. Uh, and uh, that player takes a ball and goes see how many points he or she uh, can get. So moving on to the next board. I appreciate there's some questions coming in, guys, but there's a lot to cover. Uh, but nothing wrong with you guys networking on that. That's great. So the next board, here we go. What am I trying to do here? So 3v3 directional game with the target being getting the ball in the end zone under control with a dribble or pass. Encourage creativity. Okay. So what I'm wanting to do here is I want to take three greens. One, two, three. And I want them to play against three blues. One, two, three. Players were bibbed up at the start of the session. If you forgot to put that in the animation, or if you're only bibbing players up at this point, just double click and give them a bib. It won't affect who was bibbed up previously, et cetera, et cetera. So 3v3, 3v3, and I'll ask the players to bring the cones in to create a line between these two 3v3 pitches I have. I don't need loads of cones here, so I'll just pull them off the side of the pitch. Just get the cones and drag them off out, out, out the width of your um, your screen and they should just disappear. Footballs, you're perhaps wanting all the footballs in the middle. Just drag them across. Just drag them across, ideal. And the idea is here that the three reds I've been against the three yellows on this half of the pitch. The three greens have been against the three blues on this half of the pitch. And the goal is actually for the reds to get the ball in there. Uh, yellows to get the ball in there. Greens to get the ball in there. Blues to get the ball in there. Either dribbling across that line um, or passing the ball for a teammate to receive it across that line. So let's just do a couple of animations on that, just so you pick up a couple of things. So again, first frame, coaches may be passing a ball in. Next frame, players are maybe, oh, next frame, important to do that. Next frame, players are maybe starting to move. This player's maybe starting to dribble with the ball. Pressure, pressure, whatever it may be. That may be a pass. There, might drop back, might go there, there. Great. Again, we can do the one as well where maybe we're going to get this player his next movement, his or her next movement is there. Let's animate what would happen as that's happening. Again, I don't need to label these po labor these points. I'm, I'm hoping all you pick up from this is how we make animated session plans and we'll move on from it uh, quite quickly. And we'll open up the chat at the end, we'll take the microphones off and everybody can 
now it's at that player's going to dribble in to get their team a point. That player's already got their team a point, so they'll come out. And there's the game, and hopefully we're going to hit play here. Um, it transfers quite well through your, your screens there, so it's only a couple of seconds. Ball in, 3v3 game, uh, trying to get across the end zone, leave the ball and the other team get it. Uh, or from a coach's point of view, you may encourage success that if you get in there, you actually turn and attack the other side and work your defenders to win the ball and, and earn the right to actually attack. But again, not for... Um, not for the coach's point. Um, I do see some people having to jump in and off. That's fine. I do encourage you to watch the full thing later uh, because when I get on to the function of sharing resources, um, a lot of people don't realise that when you have Tactical Pad, you can access a massive catalogue of sessions that have been created on Tactical Pad. So that's still all to come. Um, again, I think it's another good point for me just to quickly have a look at everyone's face and, and give me a nod and thumbs up if technology is still working. Everyone's still awake. We're all still good. Good. Great, great stuff. Great stuff. Right, we'll move on. Next bit. So what we're we saying in the next bit, I'm hitting the board. I'm going to the final part of the session. The notes are telling me that what we want to do here is turn it into a 6v6 game, rotate the goalkeepers frequently, and the team in possession can utilise the wide channels that I'd set up previously. Uh, the team out of possession, they can only go in there once the ball goes in there. So it should allow players to get on the ball in wide areas and then someone can pressure them to encourage the creativity and dribbling that we've had throughout the session. So again, I just use um, again, I've made a mistake there. I've drawn something I didn't mean to. I'll use the rubber. That's absolutely fine. So the reason I've made that mistake twice and hopefully it doesn't confuse too much I had this selected. So when I have this selected and I click on a ball or a player and I move it, it thinks I'm trying to animate that player. But I'm not. I'm just trying to move items. So what I want to click on is the team. So I'm now wanting to move these guys here. And that means it won't animate it. It will just move them to where I want them to be. So what I'm going to have is I'm going to have six yellows on this side of the pitch and six non-bibs or the blues on this side of the pitch. I'm going to drag all the footballs off, or as a coach, you maybe have them all at the side so you can throw in the football randomly when it goes out of play or when you lose possession and encourage that chaos that modern day football's all around where you actually want to work players more out of position than in position because that's the modern game. But again, we won't get into coaching. Don't need these cones. So let's remove these cones. Just drag them off to the side. A lot of people will be watching this and thinking there's a much easier way to get all your cones off, and you're probably right. And this is what I mean, how um, I'm always always learning as well. But this is just the way I've always done it. Just drag the cones off. So the issue I've got right now is the bibs. So just click here, bib. And this red arrow means no bib. So I'll take that off. This red arrow means no bib. I'll take that off. And this red arrow, no bib. I'll take that off. Um, I need to change this player's bib to yellow. I need to change this player's bib to yellow. I need to change this player's bib to yellow. I did say we'd have a goalkeeper in this drill, so I'm maybe actually putting the goalkeepers in a different bib, which is, is fine. And then you just change them when they come back on the, the pitch. But essentially, and I probably won't animate this one, I'll, 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 we'll get onto questions soon if there was any issues with, with animating, but I'm hoping we've kind of got it. Essentially, I've got a game now where when you have the ball, you can try and get your players spreading out and utilising width because when your team's in possession, you're allowed to go in these channels. Out, you've got your players being narrow, being compact and being together because they can't go in the channels, so they're subconsciously learning these things. But when the ball goes in the channel, this player can then press. So do they combine? Do they take on? And that's essentially my uh, session plan. Um, okay, we're going to have a little bit of a vote here. Do you want me to animate this just to see more animations or do you want me just to move 
on because I'm cautious that I've taken up an hour of your time already. So thumbs up if you want more animations, thumb down if you're happy to move on. I'm watching the cameras. Always awkward when you get a pretty 50-50 split. To be fair, um, most people are saying let's move on and those that are saying they want to see it a wee bit more, message me then, okay? So what I'm going to move on to now is I've animated this session. There's loads that I can maybe do with it now. Um, so I would be hitting the share button. And even though it's an animated session, I can still share it as a PDF document. I can still do the exact same as a static session. Click document, PDF, click the format that you want. Animated session plan, okay. Click the boards that you want to show. So maybe the session that you're actually taking out to the pitch, you're not actually doing the activity or you're not doing the progression or, or whatever. But if I'll just say for the purpose of it, I want all of these on my PDF session plan. Okay. And although it's an animated board, I've saved it as a static uh, picture and text session plan. So I'll just quickly save this one as well. And again, put it on uh, the chat. Uh, so what would we call it? Just, I guess it was a dribbling session, wasn't it? Dribbling session. So I'll stick that on the chat um, at a convenient time. Now, because it is an animated session plan, what I also might want to do uh, is share it as an animation, uh, which will be no surprise to you. You can hit share uh, and share it as a video. Now, when you do that, it's going to be whatever board you're on. So if I have this warm up or activity, whatever you want to call it, and I hit share video, Again, it will just say, where do you want to share it? On your computer, your desktop, your folders, whatever. And it just goes as an MP4 uh, as a video. If any of you are looking and wondering what this is, this is what we're going to discuss later, how as a community of coaches, particularly at this time, we can be sharing loads and loads of session plans. And you already, whether you know it or not, by having Tactical Pad, you can access a full load of sessions. So that's going to come under um, one of my headings later in regards to sharing ideas. Um, so let me just look at where we are in my notes. We've went over static session plans. We went over animated session plans, certainly the two biggest uh, in regards to time. Um, the next ones are only a couple of minutes um, because you'll be getting a sick of my voice, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, tactical presentations. So let's have a wee look at that. Literally two minutes at that because that's obviously a very open-ended thing in regards to how you want to do that. So I'm back on, I'm back on Zoom. I am going to share my screen one more time. I uh, hope. Share screen uh, and I'm going to look at uh, tactical presentations. So I guess to, to try and not talk too much, which I'm, I'm obviously very guilty of, I'm sure you can tell. The reason I think tactical is good for tactical uh, presentations is I can just put out a formation I can put on a presentation to my players and I can be moving them, obviously, just as if it's a tactics board. I don't need to overly be, be doing anything. Um, if I was to duplicate this board again, the kind of stuff I could be doing, see under your teams here, loads of formations to save you having to do them. You can just quickly click on 451. You can change this team's formation to whatever. You can obviously go into the team setting in, in regards to appearance. You might want them with their positions on the back, their numbers on the back, their names on the back. Um, you might want them looking a bit like this if it's something a little bit more tactical uh, that you're doing. Uh, hopefully, as I go over this, you'll see wee things I've mentioned previously. So if I want to take this static board and I hit Tools, Animate, are you sure you want to change a static board to an animated board? I'll say yes. And obviously, you can, if you do want to create a video, you can kind of move some things here. A couple of other bonus point, bonus things you can do that, that I would rather you worked out your, yourself because that's probably the best way to, to use it better than I use it, is you have this kind of effects idea. So you can highlight a player, especially if you're putting together a presentation to an individual or to a team. You can have the trail of a player, so where those players are moving, et cetera, et cetera. Um, connectors, so if you want to add a connector between... I'd probably rather use the other team here, so give me a little second. Tools, effects, 
connectors. Uh, so it's giving me my team here. I've got a, an old board up here with a few different players. So I'll use this team here. Let's say connectors between player number I don't know, five, six, and seven. Put them across here. Okay. Uh, the colour of the connection, I want it to be yellow. I want it to start at the first frame, end at the last frame, but that might be between frames X and X. Uh, I also want to see a connector between number 10 and 11. I want that one to be red. Yeah, whatever. So as I'm as I'm animating this, as I'm animating this, there will be a relation between those players. Obviously, your animation would be a bit more tactical and a bit more thought out than what I'm showing here. But essentially, you can add a trail of movement, a connector between players, or you can highlight a player and get something along these lines here if you're putting together a tactical. Just more so to make you aware of that button that you can start to create relationships between players. Um, if, if we're still on this video chat at half past four UK time, I've taken up far too much of your time, so I really am uh, going to move on quite quickly. But, but good for tactical presentations. Uh, what I quite like as well, if you are going to do it, if you went to team settings, one of the appearances that you can give can be a kind of, you know, name and a picture. So if you go into team squad, what you can put in is the names of your players, you know, last name, first name, however you would do it, the, the squad number, their position. Advanced mode would allow you to update, click on here and just from your computer put on a picture of the players. Now, in regards to skin tone, that's of your... I mentioned earlier that if you're using the 3D view and you're going to make them actually little players that run around, and um, you can do height, weight, etc. Um, so let's say I have done all that. And there, there you go. Um, and and as, I, as I talk through this, um, I'm realizing there's, there's still stuff you work out yourself that I'm not mentioning. Player size and item size, how big do you want your markers and your footballs and your icons that are running around, you can adjust that there, bigger, smaller, etc. The four corners questions came up, guys. Um, so if I'm on a player, if I double click a player, if I'm wanting to put together a, a match report, etc, etc, you know, were they subbed off, were they subbed on, did they score, did they score more than one goal, whatever, they get an assist, they get a red card, a yellow card, these are all amazing features on Tactical Pad that I would expect you to go and work out yourself. Are you putting in some notes in regards to how that player played? Um, four corners model, team squad, advanced mode, pick a player. I want to type in some notes. Uh, my notes might fall under these four corners. Sorry, I'm rushing ahead, so I'm just slowing things down a little bit. So when you're typing in your notes, you're putting in something, you know, technical, you're putting in something social, physical, et cetera, et cetera. This four corners thing here, it's also an option to click when you're putting together your accompanying text, you know, with a picture. So you've got a picture and an accompanying text. If you want to talk about your session in regards to the four corners model, then you can, you can do that. Um, when you're sharing uh, something that's a bit like this, you obviously might want to print off a, a team sheet, so whatever. Adidas had some game here. I better remove some of this stuff. Uh, menu, share, document, PDF. Um, this could be your team sheet. So one team, other team, names, names, formation. You will realize loads and loads and loads of things that you can do with this year. Um, the last thing that I'm going to move on to, as I said, I would mention, uh, actually, just for a little bit of fun, if anyone can take a picture or have a good look at these players, um, if you can tell me a player that played in the same team as all these players, uh, I'd love to say there was a prize, but I didn't organise that well enough. So there's a, at least one player, there's maybe more, but there's one player that's played in the same team as all these, uh, all these players. Um, just a second. 
some people still trying to come in. We've got five five minutes left. So what what players played in the same team as all of these players? In regards to sharing, guys, and I see there's a lot of good questions coming. This is an introduction to Tactical Pad. The idea being that we're giving it away for free at the moment and, and people want to um even people want to see basically how to use it. This button here, repositories here, uh, Tacticalpedia. It's a tactical pad encyclopedia of drills. Um, so if you go in here, access content, you know, people that have shared drills through tactical pad um, to Tacticalpedia, which is a whole different thing, but plenty of people have done it previously. And if you're interested in doing it in the future, you can reach out to me. If you were to search, you know, passing, dribbling, a load of sessions would come up um, that, with that theme. You know, that th that word has been associated with that session. Well, the computer's starting to go very slow, which is frustrating me, but yeah, take my, my word for it. You, you'll get a load of sessions, um, and then all you, you need to do is click on it and say open in tactical pad, and you have a session there that you might adjust, you might move, you might change something, or you might just print out and take onto the pitch. So, I've certainly got loads of sessions on this encyclopedia. Uh, I've certainly used a lot of sessions from this encyclopedia. So that button there on your tactical pad that says repositories, search a topic and a load of sessions will come up, pre-made sessions that will come up uh, for you to use. Right, I'm coming back into the webinar. I'm gonna see if anybody's still with us. So I've not had it open for a wee while. Good, we still have some people people here. A very, very quick overview of creating static and animated session plans using Tactical Pad. I'm just going to finish on this. Thank you so much uh, for listening. I hope you found it kind of beneficial to some extent. Uh, I hope that if you want more information, email me. Uh, on If you want to promote this type of webinar, because I've done it for the first time, this might have, there might have been no point to it, but if you think it's something good, then, then please give us a testimony on kind of Twitter. My Twitter's there, so more people sign up for the next one. Um, tomorrow, I'm doing one that's a lot more in my comfort zone, where I'm presenting on actual coaching, uh, a curriculum between... Uh, between ages eight and 12, and some session plans I do uh, with players of that age, particularly grassroots players. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping today's at the least um, opened up a line of communication. So as coaches, let's have a community. It's more important than ever at, at the moment while we're a little bit isolated. Let me know, do you want to see more webinars, et cetera, et cetera. But essentially, guys, that's going to be it for me. This crazy kind of time that we're living in. Please, everybody, everybody keep safe, uh, keep well. Um, and get in touch if there's any other questions. Um, but for me, that was just a very brief introduction to Tactical Pad. Thank you very much, everyone.